Welcome back to I'm Every Woman TV. We've just viewed a lot of coverage from Hollywood, TIFF, Howie Mandel, different stars. And we're going to have a commentary about this now because I have brought on today self-love expert, coach, speaker, Gail Scott, who is going to discuss with us a little bit about weight loss, self-image, what's holding us back, and what we can do about it. Now, Gail has an amazing giveaway today, a one hour, she calls it one hour taste of coaching. It's really a taste of Gail, uh, phone call. So, well, she will talk with you about some of these issues and, and I'll tell you that you can claim that by emailing, being the first to email Jeanette, J-A-N-E-T-T-E -E, at yourmarketingmagnet.com right now during this live broadcast. So let me welcome Gail Scott, to the show, self-love expert, speaker, and coach. Thanks for being with us here to get today, Gail. Uh, hi, Jeanette, and thank you for having me. You're welcome. So as I just said, we watched a segment where we saw a lot of stars, and I know that this show is about living your dreams and being your best, but sometimes that also involves looking your best, and that can create pressure, a lot of pressure, for women and men, but more so for women, because we are more affected by media and today social media, including sites like Pinterest. What do you think can be done about this? How can we come to actually love ourselves regardless of our shape and our size? I think that you're right nowadays, um, especially young girls um, in the media magazines, TV, the internet, all of these things are proposing that um, Barbie body is the way to be. That's not real. It's not healthy and it's not real. Self-love comes from deep within us and it's really about health. It's about balance. So women nowadays feel pressured to look a certain way, to dress a certain way, to be a certain way and that that's what society accepts them. But that's not right. That's my opinion. All right, so how can we make it right? What are some of the things we need to look at when we talk about weight loss, self-love, self-acceptance, self-respect? What are some of the things we need to be looking at within our self? Well, I think the first thing is that um, women nowadays have to become aware of what's important to them. So values and priorities in terms of what is it who, who are they really wanting to be? And, and that, co that covers a lot of things. It can cover the way they look, it can cover the way they feel, uh, their energy levels, their health, all different areas. Self-respect is another thing. And to understand that when you come authentically from who you are, it doesn't really matter. It's not always about the food. It's not about the exercise. It's about feeling good. It's about being happy with who you are. And yes, that means at a certain point, we do have to look at our health. I mean, we want to live as long and as great a life as we possibly can. So some, tell me how you help people live healthy. I know it's balanced and stress-free, but the healthy part, where did, I, I know that you also you were heavily involved in Weight Watchers as mm -hmm. a consultant at mm -hmm. one time, and that you bring a lot of this to your business for the weight loss and weight management proponent of what you what you offer in your business right well you know there's one thing that we know we can't live without food um, we come from specific cultures and specific families that have habits and patterns that are ingrained from childhood many of the clients that I work with um, have to come to the realization that perhaps what they grew up with isn't the healthiest especially as they get older and they go through menopause and their lives change um, in terms of being healthy, it's about looking at the food that you're eating and realizing that when you're in your teens and in your 20s, you're living a very different lifestyle. The women that I coach and counsel are women from normally age of 35 up, and they're beginning to understand that their lives are different from who they were when they were younger. And it's really understanding what's going on within your own body and then beginning to determine okay, am I treating my body the best way for it? And often that means that maybe they have food sensitivities. It might mean that they change their exercise patterns. It might mean that they want to reduce their stress. 
Sometimes uh, the self-love portion is that they have to begin to say yes to themselves. They spend a lot of time taking care of a lot of other people and then realizing that their health is the big thing that brings them to someone like me because they don't want it to continue the way it's been going. In fact, there's uh, quite a bit of content on your website that talks about you and your mom and how she would tell you as a young girl, if you have your health, you have your wealth. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I guess you really do believe in that because you said your mom was right. Yes, I do, <laughs> I do believe that. I do believe that it's about being healthy. You know, we're only given one body to, to live with in this lifetime. And it is our responsibility to take the best care of it that we can. And that's where the media comes in and influences us. If you try watching TV any evening of the week, you're bombarded with images of how you should be and what you should be doing. And that's not being authentic. That's not understanding yourself. No, and I think that worse, uh, the worst part of all that is that it, for many women, it destroys their self-esteem because they cannot measure up to these expectations without really you know, knowing that a lot of these uh, images are altered too in the media. Like they're- Absolutely. They're not, they are altered. However, I will tell you, I was on the red carpet and I do see Julia Roberts and Jennifer Aniston, who you know I showed pictures of, looking fantastic and so thin. And there's a, I, I do see that. I don't know how they do it, but I see that there. I can see where the pressure comes from, especially as a media person myself, on that red carpet, mm -hmm. trying to do my work with alongside other media people. There's a lot of pressure there too, to mm -hmm. just to, to to live up and look good. Mm -hmm. So. What are some of the tools that you offer in your coaching so women can actually, you know, not just take control of their health, but look good? So things like, I guess, watching what they eat or portion control or tracking, like yeah, is that as part of your programs? Well, my five years uh, with Weight Watchers working in the downtown core gave me access to a lot of information about how women are actually living their lives. And my own personal weight loss of 20 pounds and having maintained that through a divorce and building my business. It's really about women beginning to understand um, when they're hungry and when they're full. A lot of women don't have access to that. Beginning to understand when to take care of themselves and not do what someone else wants them to do. Health is um, it's so important that oftentimes women put themselves last. So understanding, I mean, the thing with film stars is that they're living a life that's very different from us. From they just also have general trainers people. and people that are cooking for them and measuring out their portions. Yeah, and we, uh, the I don't average know if person the time to eat three meals a day. Right, you the know? average person doesn't have that, and they also have an image to keep going in order to create an income for themselves, and that's a star life. And the average people that I'm dealing with in my business, they want to be happy, they want to be happy, and they want to be healthy, and they want to be whole, and that encompasses a whole a whole lot of stuff. The, the courses that I run, one is specifically around self-love so that women begin to understand who they are and what's important to them. The healthy weight program that I run is around their relationship with food because as I mentioned before, habits and patterns have been created from years and years of experience. Um, the coaching that I do one-on-one -on -one gives someone the opportunity to really dig deep and begin to see what it is that they really want, how they want to live, and we create action plans that help them to be successful in that. The other thing that women like, and this is very, it's indicative of the Weight Watchers' success, is that they want to feel like they belong. They want to feel like they know other women are experiencing the same things. That, that's what I do in the groups that I have. Women learn w from other women, and that's something that's inherently feminine. And that's the part that I really love the most because, you know, I created this show to bring to light women's issues and give them that community to, to discuss. And I want to showcase and collaborate with people like yourself who can really help women get past things that are presently holding them back. Mm -hmm. So you talked a, a lot about what you have to offer. Um, can you talk a little bit more about the specific process you take with your coaching? 
Yes, what I do is I start, if I'm doing individual coaching, I start with uh, what it is that they expect to have at the end of our contract. Normally I work with women for 12 weeks. So we get very, very specific about the purpose of why we're coaching. Coaching is all about taking action. We sit down and we create a plan that has very clear outcomes so that each client knows at the end of the 12 weeks what it is that they're expected to get. Um, and on a weekly basis, we come together to discuss, evolve, uh, explore, and then create action plans for them to take that are often just baby steps that they don't even realize is something that would work well for them. Often I find that the people I work with are so stressed out, they can't see the wood for the trees. They, they actually do have the answers completely within themselves, but they've just been bombarded by the media, by stress, by overwhelm. And breaking it up into uh, little parts helps them to really be able to get ac accomplish things that they didn't think they could do. So when I went through some of your marketing materials on your website, two things popped out. Habits were one, which I think you spoke a lot about. Mm -hmm. But this, was, this one really struck me, and I, I really actually want to read it because it was so good. Most people don't like themselves the way they are. And that's one of the major reasons they don't take care of themselves. Whether with food, uh, uh, the, and it can affect their, the, with food, it can affect their self uh, love actions and feelings. Mm -hmm. Would you care to comment on that and please explain it? Because I do think that that's quite true. Right. Well, and why is it that we don't like ourselves? I mean, this is self-sabotaging behavior. Mm -hmm. And I think that we, when we get to the self-sabotaging behavior, what's behind it, we actually, that's when we have the breakthrough to move mm -hmm. forward to prevent us from the things that are holding us back. Mm -hmm. Why is it that most people don't love themselves or like well, themselves? Well, self-sabotage is very common. It doesn't matter how successful uh, or a functional a family you come from, you definitely have self-sabotage. And the biggest self-sabotage that we have is, is, is judgment. And so we grow up in families where our families have come from um, um, generations that have been dysfunctional for whatever reason. And unless you come from a family that's absolutely providing unconditional acceptance and love, you are going to grow up feeling that there's something wrong with you in some way or another. And when, as an adult, you begin to realize that the perfectionistic part of us always wants us to be safe. And and so we don't love ourselves and that shows up in how we treat ourselves. And it could be that we work too hard, it could be that we cope using food or we cope using shopping. Um, oh it's yeah, that works it's, for me. It's, it's, <laughs> really, it's really about self-worth and it's really about understanding that as a human being, we matter, no matter what. And no matter what our size or shape is. No matter, yes. I mean, and you I, and said I say, something the other day about every body. Can you explain that one too, So please? What, what happened was I, um, I went to a naturist resort this past summer for the first time. Um, and what I began to understand in that experience is that every body, two separate words, every body is beautiful. So now, every not every body, not every, everybody, not everybody, but, but every is, body is beautiful. I mean, everybody is beautiful, well, but bodies but are every too. body is beautiful. That doesn't mean that every body is healthy. That's true. But in the sense of self-worth and self-love, it's about connecting to ourselves at a, at a very deep level and understanding that at a soul level, we are beautiful and we are worthy. And when we come from that place, we're coming from a place of love for every other human being on the planet. As well as for ourselves, because as well we as start with us, self-love and self-respect and yep. weight loss and maintenance and self-image starts mm -hmm. really with us, with mm -hmm. our own thoughts and perceptions of ourselves. Mm -hmm. Gail, you have a really interesting story as to why you came to this place and why you now have this business. Would you like to share a little of that with us? So my story, <laughs> I grew up in an alcoholic family where it was conditional love right? There was a lot of abuse, different kinds of abuse. Um, and coming out of that family dynamic, I did not love myself very much. By the time I hit my mid-30s, I went into early menopause and had a lot of health issues, and my relationships were crumbling. 
um, going into therapy at 41, I realized that I had to begin to love myself. Uh, and I chose that path. Um, and as a result of that, working for Weight Watchers and now working for myself and working almost exclusively with women, although I do coach men too, um, my passion is helping other women realize that no matter what they might have come from, they are worthy. And if that means that they begin to set boundaries with people who mistreat them, or they begin to develop their own values and priorities for themselves, or they can say no to other people because they want to eat a specific food or take time for themselves. That's what I had to learn because I had given up all of that in order to take care of other people in my family. Um, and that's my passion. My passion is helping other women be the best that they can be in a way that works for them, not mm -hmm. for anyone else. I think we share that passion. Mm -hmm. So. Just uh, one thing about the weight loss thing. Mm -hmm. What do you think the food we choose to eat says about us? Well, I think that food is a common addiction. Mm -hmm. um, it's also a pleasure and a reward. Mm -hmm. There's a reward center in the brain mm -hmm. that actually is fed by the food that we eat. And it's habitual. You know, when you mentioned habits earlier, it is habitual. And growing up in the families we grow up in, oftentimes food and love are connected. And so those habits just continue over time if we don't have the self-awareness that maybe it's not working for us anymore. I myself have had to change my diet quite dramatically for many different reasons. One, to maintain my weight loss, and two, to feel really good about myself. And there's lots of books out there about, you know, wheat's not good for you anymore and different things. It's about really connecting with yourself and knowing how you feel and understanding as well as women that as we age, we actually don't need as many calories as before. And really beginning to instigate that in our lives so that it works for us. And the hormone thing really wreaks havoc. I, I think more so for women than men. Mm -hmm. um, I, I've experienced that myself mm -hmm. uh, as well, that you know, with my hormones changing, it's harder to keep lose weight. I do have to lose weight. Uh, eat less, I do have to work out more in order to get the same results. Right. Um, well, the basic premise of weight loss is really very simple. Eat fewer calories, move more. Right? It's a really simple concept, but it's not an easy thing to put into practice when you have in place beliefs and habits that promote doing differently. Well, I want to tell you, you've been in my court for the last <laughs> five months and have helped me get through some weight loss challenges to avoid going on insulin as a diabetic. And I don't think I would have come this far if it wasn't for you. So I really recommend that if you are having these kind of challenges, go see Gail. Now, Gail, I just want to make sure that we get out everything that you do. So mm -hmm. if you want to just give us a, a little bit of an overview right. of what you do as a speaker and a coach. So my business is helping people live, empowering people to live the best life that they can. I do one-on-one -on -one coaching with individuals. I do group programs as well. And I also speak professionally. I have two keynotes. One is called The Thin Within, and one is called The Love Within. And I love speaking to groups about stress management and life balance and the kinds of um, challenges that we're facing right now in this particular time. And I want to mention again that Gail has a great giveaway today. It's called the Taste of Coaching, but I, I think it's more of a taste of Gail. You have a one-hour coaching call where you can talk about self-love issues, weight loss issues, and just things that are, you know, basically holding you back from being all you can be and looking and feeling your very best. And uh, there's also some action steps with that call. So that is worth $100. Mm -hmm. And the first person to email me now during this live broadcast will claim that prize and then we will pass your name on to Gail. So that you have to email me at Jeanette, J-A-N-E-T-T-E, -T -T -E, at yourmarketingmagnet.com. Calm. And as we close this segment out, I would like to ask you to uh, tell us how we can get in touch with you. And we want to put your website is on screen, but we want to 
have you refer it to it and your phone number as well. Mm -hmm. Anyone who wants to have any kind of conversation with me around any of these issues is welcome to call me. My phone number is 416-358-1457. Contact me by email, gailscott4 at rogers.com. Go on my website, check out the things that I do, and feel free to call me. And the web address again is it's, www. It's uh, gailscottcoaching.wordpress.com. And I look forward to talking to people. And ladies, I really think you should take the time to make this call today because you really deserve it. Your health is your wealth. And when we feel good about ourselves, we look good and everything else just falls into place. And really, I've learned that a lot from working with Gail. So I know you can too. And I want to thank Gail so much for being with us today. Thank you. And I want you to stay with us because we have a very special magnetic marketing moment with me, Jeanette Burke, your marketing magnet. For all you ladies, all my gals out there who are working gals, I like to call you, or fempreneurs, women in business, I want you to really know your worth. And this particular segment, we're going to talk about assessing your worth and charging what you're worth and easily getting with. So please stay with us.